What is operating leverage? There's typically two categories of expenses for businesses. One you'll hear is COGS, stands for the cost of goods sold. Think of a pencil company and the cost of wood to buy and lead, or whatever they use instead of lead and pencils now, but the idea of the raw materials, the things that on a unit basis must be utilized in the actual creation of the product or in the provision of the services. You then, as a second category, have what people call OPEX, operating expenses. These tend to be the support items for the company at large. And so if that pencil manufacturing business has in-house accountants, in-house attorneys, salespeople, systems, software, rent, things of that nature, all of the supporting items. So the idea of operating leverage is how much more profitable can the company become? We like to think of it both on a COGS or cost of goods sold and operating expense basis as revenues increase. So generally speaking, when you start getting into each type of expense, you also have the breakdown of what are called fixed or variable expenses. Fixed costs are those that stay the same until much more is needed. Think of, if you ran a manufacturing business, the, a facility. The rent every year is the same no matter how much revenue you do until you need a larger building, so to speak. Right. So it's fixed until it perhaps jumps up in a larger, chunkier manner. Whereas a variable expense would be an expense on a per unit basis or something that tends to increase pro rata with the amount of units sold. So think of a Twinkie factory, the amount of Twinkie filling you'll need to buy is going to be directly proportional to the amount of Twinkies you sell, right? So that's a variable cost. And obviously in different types of businesses, that takes different shapes as well. But those are the general two buckets. So you have COGS and OPEX, cost of goods sold, operating expenses, and then within each you have fixed and variable costs. So the concept of operating leverage is as revenues increase, where is there further profitability for the company based on these categories? Because what you like to see with companies and how we work with companies and how we like to present them when either selling or seeking capital is the idea that as revenues increase, they will not just make a proportionally larger amount of revenue. So say if a the pencil manufacturing company made a 10% gross profit or pre-tax profit on the company as a whole, if it doubles revenue, it shouldn't just be 10% on twice the amount of revenue. It should be something greater than 10% because there are, there's operating leverage. From a COGS perspective, you'll oftentimes see the operating leverage come in purchasing power. If that pencil company is looking for wood for its pencils, it's certainly going to have a lot more purchasing power if it's trying to make a million pencils, a billion pencils, than a thousand pencils. Operating leverage from a operating expense side, you can think of it twofold. First is unused capacity. So if you had a company that was, say, a distributor of certain goods and they're only using half their warehouse, it presumably can make twice as much revenue just by more fully utilizing the fixed expense that it's already paying. If a company pays $10,000 a year for a software subscription that's just a one-time license for all of its activities, then that's a fixed cost with great operating leverage because the company could push twice as much revenues utilizing that software without paying more for it. And at the same time, there's even operating leverage to different degrees with variable costs within a company. So say you're a growing company and you have an HR team, there's going to be a certain capacity to how much work that one HR professional could handle before the company gets to a larger size. And so maximizing the capacity for individuals and personnel as well, and then creating structure and processes that creates greater operating leverage. Maybe then you have an HR manager and four people that work for that person, right? And then they can tackle far more than just five regular HR people could do. Point is there's endless possibilities, but when you're thinking of a company and you're thinking of growth going forward, Oftentimes, revenue is some of the easier items to project, right? Because you're saying, okay, here's how much of this we're going to sell. Here's who we're going to sell it to. This is what the sales cycle and funnel looks like. But it adds equally as much value in discussions when looking to exit a business or looking to secure capital in taking a peek at the expenses, both COGS and OPEX, and seeing where is their leverage what things can continue to grow, how does the company grow more profitable as it gets bigger, so that if you can paint the picture of, as we double revenue, we will not only double the notional or absolute amount of pre-tax profit, but we will actually quadruple it. We will double the profit margin. So that's the important part of business, is you want to see, as revenue grows, you want EBITDA, or pre-tax earnings, to grow at a faster rate 
And that shows real brand value, shows pricing power, shows excellence in the management, the expense control of a business, and really paints a very appealing picture, ultimately, when you seek strategic transactions. And so that's the thought for today. Maximizing the outcome oftentimes incorporates operating leverage. Appreciate everyone's time. Hope the week's going well. Keep pushing forward. God bless. We'll see you next time.